it's approaching the middle of September, I believe. <laughs> and I say I believe because I, I don't remember how many days there are technically in September. Maybe 30, something like that. Uh, but it's approaching the middle of September. And as the middle of September approaches, I get more and more excited because fall is like knocking on the door wanting to come in. And I cannot wait. One of the things I'm most excited for, just FYI, in case you were wondering, is this winter, Stephanie and I are throwing our ice bath outside and leaving it out there all winter long so that we can do an ice bath every day if we want to. We can just go out and break up the ice and get in. I cannot wait for that. I'm very excited about that. And I'm sure you'll hear about it on future episodes of what? The Energy is Love podcast, which is what you are now listening to. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're listening to this podcast, you know where to listen because you are listening. If you aren't listening to this podcast, then you should ask somebody who is listening <laughs> where you can find the podcast. Now, one of the silly things, and it's not silly, but one of the things we ask you, the person listening, also known as the listener, is to share the podcast with somebody, which is very, very simple to do. You say, hey, somebody, there's this podcast that I really like. You should listen to it too. And here's where you can do that. And if you have any questions about where that could be, just go to energiesluvepodcast.com. Also, if you want to throw us some money, we always take your money if you want to throw it at us. Maybe you see us standing in line somewhere and you just want to throw money at us. We'll definitely take it. We are not above picking up coins on the ground. But if you also just want to go to the website and scroll to the very bottom of the page, you'll see a place where you can donate and throw us some cash. And we made it super simple via PayPal. So you can set it up to donate us some money once, which we'll take, or every single month. It can just be a simple $3 a month. Here you go, Craig and Steph, for the Energies Love podcast, because we love what you do. That would be awesome. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all the things that you do out there, whoever you are. This episode is brought to you by The Refinery Barbershop. The Refinery Barbershop is one of the greatest places that you can go to get your hair cut, to get your beard trimmed, to really have a once, well, I was going to say once in a lifetime, but the cool thing is, is it doesn't have to be once in a lifetime because you can go all the time. But it's a great place to go and experience some of that old school barbery uh, that doesn't really exist a lot in today's society. They treat each and every man that comes there as an individual. Uh, they know your name. They know who you are. You're not just some other person walking through the door. They really value the, the customer and the people that show up and sit in those chairs. It's a great environment. It's a great place. Great barbers. Cannot speak highly enough about it. So if you are one of the many, 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 many listeners that we have in Utah, go check them out. They are down in Springville. You can find them at our website. If you just click on sponsors, you can see their information up there. You can also go to refinerybarbershop.com and they make it super simple and easy to book right there at their website. Go now, get your hair cut, get your beard trimmed, and tell them that you heard about them on the Energy is Love podcast. Also now you've got just a few more weeks if you want to come to Utah, or maybe you live here in Utah, you don't have to come here, but you've got a few more weeks to sign up for the Brave Men Dare experience. Go to bravemendare.com. You can also find that through the podcast website and sign up for the fall experience that's coming up in October because I would love to see you and I would love to hang out with you and we get to slow down and get to connect and get to dive into some, not just ice baths, but some deep emotional work that can take place. It can, trust me, believe me. So yeah, go sign up, go check it out and then come hang out with us in October. I'm recording this promo or intro, whatever we want to call it, for this episode immediately after the fact of us recording it. And I have no idea what we're going to call this episode other than Craig talks for a long time about difficult shit. I think that might be the title for this episode because that's what this was. <laughs> this was me talking for a long time about some of the shit that has come up from last week's episode, actually. And we, we are right in the thick of it here at the Salazar household and we're loving it to some extent. We're diving in. We are all in. Stephanie and I have definitely committed ourselves to the fine art and practice of emotional growth, expansion, connection, you name it. But uh, this episode is uh, another wonderful, deep experience that was hard for us to record. And you get to benefit as the listener. So you're fucking welcome. 
Barb. But for now, sit back and relax. Turn it up because it's jazzy music that you're going to shake your butt to. Not really. <laughs> Turn it up and enjoy another wonderful episode with Steph and I. Here we go. You're listening to the Energy is Love podcast. Energy is love. The Energy is the love podcast. The Energy is Love podcast. Energy is love. The Energy is Love podcast. The podcast for the universe. The Energy is Love podcast. And you know what? I think you've been keeping the good headphones for you because these ones I feel like work better. These are not my headphones. <laughs> no, they listen the same. No, I don't think so. They do. Mm -mm. I, I actually keep the bad headphones for me. Oh. I don't know if you realize that. Have you ever seen the ones that I I've use? I've seen when you have the taped ones yeah. for you. I've got a couple set that are taped. Well... I don't know. That was a funny story. Did I ever tell you that story? I don't know. It's one of the times that I was traveling and um, going through security. And as soon as I get out of security, I usually pull my headphones out and throw them on because I have to walk through the airport to go to the gate or whatever and um, listen into ship. So it was uh, one of those times when it was like a shitty going through security where they piss me off and they pulling all my shit out and looking at everything. And I get done going through and I'm putting everything away and I'm pulling out my headphones and I pull them out and they're broke. I'm like, motherfucker. I'm so pissed off because I have a nice big long flight. I don't have headphones. Anyways, I'm really, really angry and I'm sitting there trying to figure out what I'm going to do and I'm looking at them and I was about to go throw them in the garbage and then go buy me some shitty set of headphones somewhere, right? And I'm looking at them. I'm like, I think I can fix these. So I start fiddling with them and sure enough, it like they'll, I can put them back together so that they'll work. Uh, but they won't stay together. So then I dig into my handy bag of shit that I have to travel around with and pull out some of the uh, blue tape, the painter's tape, and uh, taped them back together. And then used those for a really long time with uh, the blue painter's tape on them because it worked. But yeah, we need some new headphones. We do. How come you didn't tell them, hey... You broke my headphones. Because they don't you, care about you, they anything. They do. You get you get a claim that they ignore forever. I think there's some TSA agents that don't actually speak English. Because you'll communicate with them and they just stare at you. Maybe, maybe they... Never mind. I was going to say something else. <laughs> like you'll say something like, hi, and then they just like look at you. It, does, does it feel like they don't understand what you're saying? No, it feels like they're assholes. Yeah. And so when you look at somebody and you talk to them directly and they don't, don't, turn don't, this don't, around. don't, don't, no, no, don't I'm, I'm just sympathizing around. with you. I see how that is. That is a frustrating thing. I'm sorry you experienced that. I was going to say something else about the, uh, about the headphones now. Oh, we need new headphones. So, uh, send us money, Barb. <laughs> We're yeah. still waiting on the mics too. Yeah. We need you new headphones, new, new mics. Send us some money, Barb. We made it really easy for you. Go to the <clears throat> go to the website, Barb, and down at the bottom, you'll see a button that we should probably change to just Barb, and then that way it's really easy for you. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Barb's button. At some point, can we do that just for a little while? Just make a Barb's button? Yeah. Just call it that? You can totally change it oh up to Barb's gosh, button. Oh my gosh, that would make me so happy. Nobody else will know what the hell it is, but... Oh, yes, they will. And everybody will be... Let me try that again. Everybody will be happy to click on Barb's button and see what comes up. <laughs> click on Barb's button. You hear it now. <laughs> That's why it makes me so happy. <laughs> the the visual that I have for Barb, um, I do not want to click on her button. I have a different visual of Barb. Do you? I do. For me, Barb's in a like a plaid shirt with rolled up sleeves. You don't want to alienate. <laughs> <laughs> Barb, I'll click your button. Come on. <laughs> uh, so we're sick. No, we're not sick anymore. No. Last week we were sick. Mm -hmm. We're feeling much better, even though we may not sound 100%, but we do feel much better. Yes. And we are still sweating this week. That was, uh, I don't know if you remember last week, but you gave me the cayenne. Oh, and, that's uh, right. Yeah. You haven't had any of my tea since no. either. Yeah, I have. No, you haven't. Oh, did you? No. Was that, I think that was the last one. <laughs> Did you have one more? Don't take it personal. I like your tea. I'm not, how could I take that personal? It was good. It's good. I like tea. I like your tea. You like my tea? I've never been a tea drinker. It's just not something that I drink. You should let me make you my favorite relaxing concoction tonight. No apple cider vinegar included. I promise. There's no cayenne. There's no ginger. There's no plantain. There's no, I can eat. There's none of that. It's just yummy, soothing. I don't know. 
tea's just not for me. You just said you like my tea. I do like your tea. I feel like there's falseness in that now. <laughs> well, if I'm going to have tea, tea, it's going to be your tea. Because you do make good tea. Thank you. I just don't like tea. You realize that you're contradicting yourself completely. You're like, no. I like your tea, baby. No. <laughs> 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 All right. You can take take a drink next time I make it for make me. Your, just yeah. at least take a drink. I will. I will. I tried to get you to take a drink last time, and you were like, oh. "You curled up your." <laughs> I do like that cinnamon cider stuff, but that's not my tea. That's not tea. That's not. It's yeah, and yeah. it's not mine. It's just a single packet. Yeah. Nothing. There's no creativity, no creative mix involved. Well, it comes at all. in a tea packet, so I convince myself it's tea. That's right. What? Nothing. You said that's right. It yeah. is tea, right? I, I get do that credit too. for it. Yeah. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. What are we getting into? We're going to start the episode now. All right. All of that previous conversation was not the episode. Mm -hmm. So now we're here. Here we go. Are you going to hit record? Uh, I'm going to hit record. Go. We're recording now. Um, what should we talk about? <laughs> you, I thought you had something in mind. I've been waiting to follow your lead. <laughs> oh, goodness. We could talk about tea. No, we're not talking about <laughs> tea. How do you feel with our movement this month so far? I a weekend. What is it? Is it the fourth day? Is it the fourth day? It I think is it's the, the fourth, fourth day, day, but we're going to pretend it's a weekend because it's a that's weekend. That's right. That's not. It's not the weekend right now, but we are one, one week, week into September because yeah. that's what it'll be when this episode comes out. Going strong and feeling really good. Good. Yeah, I'm really liking it. Having some body awareness and. Already feeling the benefits. Good. So that's really good. That's really good. That makes that's me exciting. Happy. How about you? Uh, I feel good today. Mm -hmm. I feel strong today. I went on my walk today. I went for a walk today. When I say my walk, you don't understand what I'm talking about, listener, but I went on a walk today and did it barefoot, which was kind of fun. And yeah, I don't know. I feel okay with the movement. I don't feel great, meaning like, Yay, I'm succeeding. What's your mood today? Today I feel I, today I feel really good. Really happy. Four days or one weekend, depending how you look at it. <laughs> and you are already feeling great. Oh, I feel better for sure. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. It feels good. That's a shoulder shimmy. Yeah, it feels good. Um, What? I don't know. I'm over here being cute and you are not like realizing it. So you've got something on your mind that's brewing. What's coming mm -hmm. out? <laughs> you know, my voice may not be all the way back. I thought it was, but I can still hear it kind of funny. But it sounds so much better. It does it? sound better. You sound wonderful. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, sing? I don't. Um, I don't. Uh, fuck. I. I was all excited to talk about this stuff on the podcast. Okay. And then we got a little sidetracked with, you know, lunch and eating and things like that, and. No, I'm like a little nervous and oh. uh, don't want to necessarily talk about it on the podcast. I don't feel as much as uh, I was earlier in that space. But what we'll do, rather than sitting here thinking about what am I going to talk about or how can I uh, express this on the podcast, I'm going to just share with you. you share with beautiful me? Beautiful woman. A uh, woman that I love. Who's over here being all cute. You are very cute. You actually are incredibly cute. Hmm. For those listeners out there who have no idea what Stephanie looks like, she's beautiful. You should go look. Um, but they have to look at my post, not yours, because you do not post good <laughs> pictures of me. I kind of mean like you do not. You. I take amazing pictures of you. Um, that never see the light of day. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Uh, no, so this, the way that I'm feeling right now and the things that I'm nervous about talking about all stems from our episode last week and in regards to me feeling fat and thinking that I'm fat and my whole self image and the stories that I tell myself and all of that stuff that came up last week when we were on the podcast together, you know, the energy is love podcast that we did. <laughs> and, um, a good friend of mine who, uh, has actually been on the podcast a while back. He was on the big episode that I did with. Uh, some of the guys from Everyman, John Sturpey, and um, what was the name of that episode? What uh, what real men look like? Or quick reference, standby, standby one, and 
because it's a while back. It's a while back. <sighs> Shit. Can you not find it? Yeah, no, I'm looking right now. Okay, where, so where are all, where the, good are all the good men? Episode 131. Um, anyways, John's a good friend of mine and he listens to the podcast and he called me up this morning. Him and I had a really wonderful conversation because that episode that we did last week kind of hit him really uh, hard, good, or however, uh, in a good way. He really resonated and connected with some of the stuff that I was talking about and sharing. So then him and I had a really long, good, great conversation. And in the process of that, he helped me go into it a little bit deeper into that space. <laughs> and I feel so foolish now talking about it. Um, You're talking to me. Remember? I am talking to you. Me. Yeah, it was really cool, babe, because... He could connect and resonate a lot with what I had said and what I had talked about. And he had, you know, over the course of his life has felt some of the similar things and dealt with some of the similar things. And, um, like, that's always cool. I love when the shit that we talk about on this podcast resonates with the people that listen. And, uh, cause that's always the end of the day goal of just sparking something in somebody else out there listening so that they think about things differently and feel things differently. So that was good. Um, where are you at? I was trying not to cough. Sorry. Yeah. Swallow hard. <laughs> Just swallow hard, baby. <laughs> so, Steph, rather than trying to, like, replay the entire conversation with you, some of the things that really stuck out to me, I realized... Because... On last week's episode, when I was talking about this stuff, I want to, part of the stretch for me this month is not just movement every day and helping me feel more active physically and doing things like that, but I'm going to also sit in the space of this fat feeling and telling myself that I'm fat and feeling fat because it feels like a passenger that's been with me for a long time. It feels like the shadow that has stuck in uh, all the kind of nooks and crannies <laughs> of my life. So I want to go back to the time periods in my life where perhaps it wasn't there, which entails going back to the time period of being a child and going back into that space where a lot of stuff um, became like coping mechanisms. A lot of stuff, you know, developed, let's say, a lot of my... Uh, self-image and my processing and my, uh, a lot of my emotional intelligence, let's use that fancy word, was developed, excuse me, from a very early age. And unfortunately, I had to develop a lot of that myself. I realized that, uh, just to give you some context, people that are listening, my, I grew up in a family where I had two older brothers uh, they're only a few years older than I am. My oldest brother is like four years older than me. And I was the youngest of all three. By the time I felt like I came along, um, my parents were already, you know, busy having raised these two kids. My dad had a type of job where he was gone um, majority of the week. He would go to work for three or four days at a time and actually live and stay there at his job. And then come home and be home for three or four days and then go back to work. And that was his schedule for my entire life. So there were big chunks of time where my dad just wasn't home. So my mom was raising us. And by the time I came along, my mom had already raised two other kids. So we know from being parents like that, that last kid kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of don't have the same spunk and energy that you have with your first kid. And not only that, but my mom was also really having to work a lot to provide for us. So I remember from a very early age, the way that my mom made money for us was uh, babysitting kids. So she watched a lot of kids. So my early, some of my earliest memories are hanging out and spending time with all the babysitting kids, playing with the babysitting kids, and because that's who was there. She would have, you know, nine or 10 kids each day at the house that she would be babysitting. And, um, which didn't leave a lot of time for me. And my dad wasn't present because he was gone to work. And so I realized, uh, today talking with John, going through this and stuff, 
uh, I, now I can't remember the words that I used, but it was, uh, essentially like, um, like I wasn't like nobody was paying attention to me and I wanted somebody to pay attention to me because I need that validation and that love and that affection. Right. But nobody was really paying attention to me and I didn't really know what I was doing. And then eventually it was like, well, nobody's paying attention to me. I might as well just do whatever the fuck I want. And that's what I did. Growing up was kind of did whatever the fuck I wanted to do. And it's nice from the standpoint of like a kid and you've got, you know, the freedom to do whatever you want to do and go play over at this house and ride your bike over here and get into trouble and have fun and all those kind of adventures that you have as a child. That's wonderful. But then like nobody, then you have this overwhelming sense that nobody's paying attention to you. And when they do pay attention to you, it, it's not like devoted, emotional, present love. You know, it's kind of like the half-assed way that you can kind of pay attention to a child. And that sucks. And that, uh, that sucks. That doesn't feel good. So I realized that I didn't necessarily get a lot of, um, attention and love and validation, uh, from a really, really early age. So I had to figure out a lot of things on my own, I had to figure out how to do things, how to figure out how to, um, you know, experience life and different situations and things like that. And just like any other kid, you figure that out how the best that you can by, you know, half-assing your way through it because you don't have the skill set and you don't have the knowledge, you don't have people helping you. So I, I felt a lot of things, I think, from an early age that I didn't have the context to process. Um... And then, then kind of how this specifically relates into like the dynamic of me being um, fat or feeling that I was fat. There's also like parts of my, um, like we have a fat family, right? I always remember thinking that my parents were big and not like when you're a little kid, you don't look at your parents and think, oh my God, they're fat. But you also have like some contextual understanding that they're like big people. And that's not a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with that. And I don't think there is anything wrong with that. Obviously, I'm not fat shaming people or anything like that. But we've always been a big, big people. <laughs> and um, food, obviously, just an incredible, unhealthy relationship with food. And I think it's the big melting pot of a bunch of these different things coming together to just solidify some really unhealthy not just coping mechanisms, but also um, like ability to process through stuff, you know, never got the ability to really learn the process of like the emotional work that you and I do today, you know, that's coming now as an adult that wasn't ever taught or, you know, Baby, I'm all over the fucking place. I'm having a really hard time. So talk to me, Goose. <laughs> Please. I want to keep listening. Okay. What What's jumping out at you? Well, until it got a little overwhelming at how open you were being. I feel like you said those same exact words to me last night. Um, you were just speaking like openly, just saying exactly what you're feeling from your heart. You were given this. Like, yeah, there was a story, but you were, it wasn't. You were just like, oh, this is, you had some real realizations and seeing your path and you were opening. Then you kind of like, oh shit, I'm talking a lot. I'm sharing a lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm rambling. Yeah, I'm out. Hey, yeah. It's okay. I feel uncomfortable for a minute and go back to it. Well, I do feel uncomfortable. I feel foolish. One of the things too that um, all of this causes me to feel not just expressing and sharing this now, but going back into this space and thinking about these things and I super minimize like, like it's not that big of a deal, right? I didn't have that difficult of a childhood. It wasn't that hard. Um, so it's silly to me that somehow I'm dealing with the ramifications of 
my childhood when it, it wasn't that bad. Do you know what I mean? Fact is, I had always had a roof over my head. Like I could go down that track of justifying and explaining how it wasn't that bad and how I shouldn't be, you know, I shouldn't be as fucked up as I am today. And I should, like I minimize the experience. And uh, that plays into one of the things that John talked a great deal about. And um, <laughs> one of the things that John talked a great deal about on this phone conversation that him and I had <laughs> that we are now retelling on the podcast. Sorry, John. Uh, he's got one of the things that he really resonates with and that has helped him over the, you know, his life is this form of therapy called IFS. So India Foxtrot Sierra. And it stands for internal family systems, I think is what he called it. And he, I mean, he like gave me super brief cliff notes on it in the process of kind of helping me go deeper into some of the stuff, but what really resonated and stood out. And I, and I do want to look at it some more, babe, but, um, is it's like identifying these things that get in the way of stuff and realizing that they're not necessarily, I, and by the way, I'm going to do a terrible job and I'm going to butcher this, but they're not, um, getting in the way of things. They were, you know, there as they served a purpose and a role and they continue to do so. And so changing your relationship with those things now because they have served a purpose and they've been here and they've been in your life and they've been developed over time because they did serve a purpose in your life. But now it's changing your relationship with those things because the way that it served a purpose for me when I was four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old is vastly different than the way that it serves a purpose for me today. And to kind of give you context, babe, of what, like, I talked to him about this experience that I remember. I have this memory in my head, and there's parts of it that are very, very clear. I can remember them very, very clear. But I don't have the clarity of the memory of exactly what took place or why this happened. But I was little, and how little, I don't know whether I was five years old, or maybe I was even eight years old, or I don't even know. But I was little and I was crying as I was looking out the window of my bedroom. So I was like, I remember the window was open because I could like hear and feel the fresh air. And I had like my fain, my face pushed against a screen. Like you remember, um, like I know what a screen, a window screen smells like and feels like, right? Because you can like I remember being a kid, like pushing your face up against it and I'm sobbing, like I'm crying uncontrollably in this moment and in this memory and like legit big, huge crocodile tears, sobbing uncontrollably as I'm like looking out this window. And I don't remember exactly why, but the feeling is that I'm being left. Excuse me. The feeling is that somebody's leaving, somebody left, I, I got left out of something um, abandoned, something like that. That's what the feeling is. And I remember it very, very well, the feeling of it and the memory, um, in this moment. And then I also remember like, Oh, fuck that. I'm not doing that again. And then not crying like that for a very, very long time. Not like really crying that intense, you know, letting that much emotion out in such a profound way for a very long time after that fact. And as I was talking to John, he was talking about, uh, for example, the thing that would be um, like in that space, as soon as I start retelling that memory and thinking that thought and feeling that feeling, I immediately want to come in and minimize it. I immediately want to like stop myself from really feeling that feeling again or going back to that space of feeling that, that feeling or connecting with that small little boy at that point who was feeling that feeling. I want to stop that. And the thing that comes in to stop that is like this minimizing thing where it's like, oh, it's not that big of a deal, you know, whatever the experience was, you know, whether it was being abandoned or being left or, cause obviously I wasn't, it's not like that was the moment in my life when my mom left me or something like that. That's not, that didn't happen. Uh, so I want to minimize it. So the reaction that I'm having to that experience that I'm remembering, this person, this thing, uh, this coping mechanism that wants to come in and minimize that memory and minimize that feeling, 
that's the thing that I can change the relationship with. So identifying that thing that is wanting to step in and protect me from feeling the pain from the past, that's the thing that I like need to have a conversation with and be like, look, dude, I know you're here. I know you're wanting to come in and, you know, minimize this situation and not make it that big of a deal. And I see you. I accept that you're here. I get it. But give me a minute. Like, go stand over there or wait outside and I'll come outside and talk to you in a minute. But in the meantime, I really want to be there for, with, and that little boy. I really want to go into that space so that he gets the opportunity to like really be felt and heard in that moment. And over the t- over time and over the process and over the steps and all this kind of whatever, uh, I can work on changing my relationship with that thing, that thing that minimizes stuff, right? And now as I'm expressing it and thinking about it and talking about it some more, I'm getting some more fucking information that's making me uncomfortable. And the minimization of stuff, right? And... Uh, Like I used to think, like I think part of that coping mechanism of minimizing things probably comes from, in one way, shape or form, because everything's multi-layered, right? Uh, Like my mom minimizing the realities of what it was like to be married to my dad and like the realities of their relationship and minimize like in the sense of like, well, it's not that bad, right? Like, you know, my dad did work a job for 30 plus years before he retired from it so that he could provide for us. And he did that. You know, I always had a roof and clothes and food and everything like that. So like, I'm sure some of that coping mechanism and some of that stepping in to minimize things undoubtedly stems from her and her coping mechanism and her of like, well, it's not that bad. And Instead of being like, oh, this relationship really sucks and, (laughs) you know, feeling my way through that or her feeling her way through that. So I'm getting that part of it where that's probably some learned behavior that I had from a very early age of minimizing things and experiences that really sucked instead of just like feeling my way through those things. And of course she didn't know better. And of course she did the best that she could and all those kind of things. But that's now when I sit and think about this added stretch for me this month of September where I'm going to be feeling my way into that space of why I'm fat and how I feel about being fat and going back into the time in history when maybe there was this little Craig that didn't feel fat and what happened and all the different layers. Um, That's some of the stuff that I want to try to incorporate. Excuse me, is uh, going to that place. Oh, goodness. And bringing forth some of those memories that I can do because I have them. And then seeing what's getting in the way. Seeing what's stopping me from really feeling those things now, today. And it's this visualization of like seeing that little boy at the window sobbing. And me as a grown ass man, as the adult that I am today, wanting to go to him and comfort him. And then what gets in the way of that. And then like naming it and identifying it and even like, uh, you know, contextualizing it and giving it some sort of visual representation of whatever that might be. So then I can have a conversation with that part too. you know, have a conversation with that part that's stepping in the way of me going to that little boy and sitting with him and being like, dude, like, yeah, this sucks. Let me wrap you up and let you feel all of that pain and all of that sadness and those big crocodile tears. So I just talked a whole bunch there and I could feel myself getting faster as I was talking, trying to get it all out before it, uh, before I lost some part of it, before it kind of shut off. And I don't know what to, um, I don't know what to do with all of it, but, uh, I'm also excited to kind of start that process and see what kind of stuff I can both discover and feel into the space of like, back in the day, there was this little kid that 
used to run around and not think he was fat. And then I don't, like I said, I think I said it on the last episode, it's not one thing. There wasn't some incident of being humiliated or something like that. Uh, it's a combination of, I'm sure, tons of different things. So I'm not going to come up with some memory of some experience where I'm like, oh, that's the moment in time where everything shifted for me. And now I ran around as that same little kid, but this time thought that I, that little kid was fat. That didn't happen. I know that didn't happen, but I do want to sit with that kid and hopefully be able to find him before he had that thought, you know, sit with him and connect with him before he had that thought. And just see what that feels like. Because I kind of can't remember that. <laughs> I kind of can't remember. I can't remember never feeling this way. So. My brain tells me that I definitely had a time in my life when I didn't feel this way. But I don't remember. So I want to go back and try to find that in some way, shape, or form. And then along the way, all the other stuff that I get to discover and find and process and work through. So uh, I just looked at the time. But I did talk for a long time. I just said a whole bunch of things, and I feel super uncomfortable now that you're looking at me. So now, now you get to talk and say something, even if it's... <laughs> I don't care. Talk about something, dear. You don't care? <laughs> um, I heard two things. I heard a lot of things. I heard two things that kind of uh, hit that um, a little Freudian slip of when you were talking about your mom in the relationship when you said you feeling your way through that and then corrected that, your mom feeling your way through that. Um, immediately disconnecting from the thought of you feeling your way through anything. And which connects with the little boy in the window crying and uh, what's stopping you from going to him and comforting him at that moment. Rewind back to you feeling what you're feeling. Ooh, take that out. Yeah. Yeah. I think <laughs> like I, I can, I can feel you're like, no, that's not it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not going to do that. You know, you're whatever resistance <laughs> that you're coming at. Like, don't you fucking start with me. Um, but I would encourage you to like play that scene out in your head. And just kick back in some time with just you and come to it as a place of where you are now. Like feel you looking down, seeing him and moving towards him and just starting with that and letting it unfold however it unfolds. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine doing that. Yeah. I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> I'm not asking you to do that right now. I think this is something that um, can be walked through and talked through. But to really get to the depth of that, I feel like uh, having a microphone in your face isn't the way to do it. Yeah, no, I agree. So I'm just hoping that when you're going back and editing. Tune in next week for the podcast. <laughs> you, you hear it and those jump out at you too. And then it reminds you and you take a moment and you go and do it. I remember it, it was like a... It felt like a summer day, like in the evening when things are starting to cool off and there was like a breeze outside and some wind. Like that, like the light was that kind of light. You know how like the light coming through the window changes throughout the day and you can kind of tell when it's morning and tell when it's, you know, midday and... It was the light of like late afternoon, early evening. Yeah. 
And like I said, it's not a memory that is really super connected to some experience, but it's very connected to a feeling. Like I remember, I can feel very, very much of what that little boy was feeling. That's how intense the feeling is of whatever he was feeling at that moment. But I don't have a ton of context for what or why or what triggered or do you know what I mean? But I sure as fuck can remember the feeling. And I can think now, dear, looking at it from looking at it from the <laughs> it's gonna be silly. <laughs> looking at it from the what is the the high horse that I sit on? <laughs> um but no, given the skill set and the mindset and the understanding that I have now. And um I avoided that much like feeling for a long, long time. Like after that and whether it was like some that's the other thing is I think we when you get into the space of these thoughts and these feelings and these memories, I don't think it's linear at all. So it's hard for me to say after that moment, then I never felt that way again. Cause it's, it's too like memory is not linear. It's memory is very much like circular in the sense that, do you know what I mean? They just, memory does not work in a straight line forward or backwards. <laughs> and, um, but it feels like after that fact or after that moment, I really avoided that intense type of emotion for a really long time. And uh, I can remember some key moments in my life after that fact where I did feel that strongly and hating it, like hating that much emotion, hating that feeling, hating that, um, just that I was feeling that much and being like angry that I was feeling that much and frustrated and the pain associated with it and fighting against it so badly for a long time. And, um, I mean, honestly, like for a really long time, you know, not wanting to feel that much for the vast majority of my life and only having brief moments when it, when I would eventually feel that much. And, uh, Yeah, that's, that's sad. <laughs> that's sad that I did that and that I continued to do that all throughout my life up until a few years ago. And it's also sad and it's frustrating that I continue to do that still today in one way, shape, or form. You know, I still avoid intense emotion. I still avoid feeling it. I still avoid like not just letting it come out, but literally just feeling it. And I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> so that's some of the stuff that came from the conversation with John. Mm. It's a good conversation. Yeah, it was. It was a really good conversation. I'm super blessed to have wonderful men in my life that I can have wonderful conversations like that with. And I'm also super blessed to have you in my life. That was some of the other stuff that came up was uh, just I'm, I'm so grateful for you, Steph. And I'm so grateful for what we do. I'm also grateful for this dumb podcast <laughs> because I think in one way, shape, or form, especially this year, um, with how difficult things have been, we still committed to this stupid podcast and recording and uh, releasing episodes every week. And that has made us sit down from one another and talk, you know, sit down from one another and connect. And sometimes they're great and sometimes they're not. <laughs> sometimes we're super connected and sometimes we're not. But uh, you and I have committed to that and that's amazing. And I think we, like we talked last week about how difficult this year has been, but how well we have been able to maintain that connection with one another. And I'm grateful for that. And I think it speaks loads and volumes to you and I and our capacity and what we do. And by that, I mean like you and me connecting and talking and continuing to do so. Me too. Why are you minimizing the podcast? 
It's not dumb or stupid. I know. It's great. It's a podcast for the fucking universe. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things that uh, I went off on kind of a tangent when I was talking to John, and I really do believe this in the context of especially where you and I are at right now, um, and the funny, easiest way for me to kind of think about it or describe it is like the new update for your phone. And uh, you and I have put in copious amounts of work on developing the new software update. And we are just like, like I feel like for me personally, and you might feel differently for yourself, but I feel like for me personally, all the pieces have been tested. All the new updates have been like ran through the firmware and all the bug fixes have been fixed and we're finally putting everything together and ready to download the new update. And when that new update downloads, then I get to go back and readdress everything because that's what happens. I think that whole continual evolution of our mental, physical body, emotional body, spiritual body, everything always continually evolving that when we get a new level of information or a new understanding or just a new skill set. It doesn't have to be some fancy download from the universe or anything like that. It's literally just the work and the practice of life. And when you get to the certain point where you've put in enough work and enough practice and you're ready to implement a new download or implement a new skill set, you then go back and readdress everything with that new skill set, with those new lenses and those new um, skills that you have. And I feel like that's what we are both on the cusp of doing. And that's why so much stuff is coming back up again, once again, once again, once again, readdressing the same old shit over and over and over again is what it feels like. But the reality is readdressing the same old shit over and over again with a completely new software and a completely new skill set and the ability to process and fill all of those things in a completely different way. So this isn't the first time that I've been fat. This isn't the first time that I've been frustrated with being fat. This isn't the first time that I've thought about being, you know, unseen and uncared about and uncared for from a very early, all of that stuff has been felt and processed before by me, but now I have a completely new skill set to go back and do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again over and over and over again. And each time that happens, I get more information and more skill sets and <laughs> a greater ability to practice present moment where I'm at. So right now I'm more able of being present in every moment, as well as feeling my way through every moment, as well as like mentally and like, I just get better and better and better at life. And I think part of that is just continuing to go back and reprocess and reprocess and reprocess with the new skill set that you have. So I think we're right in the thick of that deer, right in the middle of that uh, upgrade period where we are about to press upgrade. And then your phone goes through the software update that takes sometimes long periods of time. Thanks, T-Mobile. And then all the apps have to be updated. All the information has to be ran back through those because we've got new information and a new skill set. Do you feel that for yourself to some degree? I'm feeling a whole bunch of us. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I definitely. <laughs> sounds that sounds so funny. That sounds like bullshit. Yeah, I definitely agree. Sounds like the biggest load of shit ever. Like that's what you're supposed to say right now. It just sounds like the biggest lie. Do you not agree? I do, but I wonder what it is about feeling it. I'm like, yeah, I definitely agree. And with that phrase, just made me immediately feel like. That's a lie. That's not how somebody sounds when they're telling the truth. I don't know what that means. I don't know. So do you feel like I'm not telling the truth? <gasps> oh, no. Or you're not telling the truth to yourself? No, I f I'm probably about a lot of things, honestly, <laughs> but not about that. <laughs> I'm just wondering what it is with that phrase of what. I don't know kind of distracted in things um I don't know I just I got some sadness there for a minute like I had this uh like doing a good job at not 
you know, pulling all that in and listening to you and just doing the, the, the amazing phrase that everybody loves of holding space, you know, how everybody loves that, but, um, I'll start minimizing things too. Um, (laughs) but just like feeling it, but not feeling it as my own, you know, just really just like feeling you without feeling, feeling what you're feeling, but still feeling you and, you know, um, but then that last little bit hit me when you were like saying, you know, it's not the first time that you haven't felt seen and felt loved. And I just had this like, that's it. Knock the microphone over, dive on you. (laughs) Just like love you and give you all this. And then feeling this urge, the sensation just to pour out love for you. Um, like I didn't even have to wait for your reaction to shut me down because I knew that would be followed immediately. So I got sad by thinking you you wouldn't let me do that. And I just felt very small over here and very, um, I feel a whole lot of things right now about that. And so when I'm saying, yeah, I agree. I just felt like, but what fucking good does that do? (laughs) You know, I don't know. That just hit a weird wave. I wasn't expecting that wave. I haven't been feeling, I don't know. Today's felt super good. I've been super happy. And I'm going to say super a few more times. Uh, I don't know. That just like, I feel like I just got knocked off of this super comfortable stool that I'm sitting on. Like, I don't know. I don't know what hit. I don't know if that just hit so hard. Whether, I don't know. Whatever. I guess there's no point in talking about it anymore because all I can say is super, I don't know, and whatever. And that doesn't like really <laughs> clarify anything. Do you feel like you have a, because uh, I think that you have been going back and readdressing some things oh, from yeah. your past. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think that, I think we can officially say now because we've had it experienced quite a few times where that's actually a good sign. Yeah. And I think that that actually means that, like I said, we're getting ready to, uh, you know, upgrade this model mm-hmm. because we have a new level of awareness and understanding. True. Do you feel that for yourself? I do. However, I get held back with the, um, when I see patterns, you know, I see patterns in myself and like some of these things that you're saying is taking me back to things. I've got so many like fine tuned moments, um, from just, you're talking about yours that like, Oh, I know where that was. I see that. Look at that right there. That have just been like boom, boom, boom. For you or for me? For me. Okay. Because like, I didn't. It has triggered that. Like I can't see your childhood. You know. Yeah. I can definitely see where it plays out, and there's some things that it's uh, would be. This is where I would lead the conversation with you at this point. This is something that I would hear, but it's um given me also my own, you know. That's how, how it works, right? Yeah, yeah. You both gain. Um, but then instead of looking at that, which I have done, um, it immediately takes me to patterns that I've seen in kids. And um, like, oh. Our kids? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, that's, that's what they were feeling. That's where I fucked up real bad. Mm. So it doesn't feel like, oh, well, it's okay because I'm growing. It's like, oh, I fucking hate myself because I cause that much pain. And so it's really hard to feel like. For one, like there's um, benefit and then it really feels like the most selfish, disgusting thing of how dare you feel better. Look at all the pain you've caused. Look at how horrible you are. You know, you think you get to feel better now? No. So it feels like horrible. Maybe I guess that's the part that I'm like, yeah, that doesn't sound true. That's not true. <laughs> so uh, if we use um, what Rip John was talking about earlier. <laughs> what John was talking about earlier on the phone conversation <laughs> when I had uh, IFS, right? Mm-hmm. That thing that's getting in the way of you feeling those, that would be the thing that we would need to kind of like identify and address and kind of clarify. So then you could speak to it and say, hey, I see you there wanting to degrade me, wanting to make me feel like a piece of shit and tell myself that I'm a piece of shit and look how much pain you've suffered. I see you there. Uh, do me a favor and hold tight. Just wait a moment. Uh, I'll come back to you. You have some valid points and I want to give you space and time to 
share all of those with me. But right now, I need you to shut the fuck up and just wait over there. And in the meantime, I'm going to go back and I'm going to fill some of this stuff. Boy, that was a pretty good answer. To what question? My, me? I, what? <laughs> what? What was a good yeah, answer? Exactly. Um, I, that, First off, I'm not familiar with this system at all. I mean, you could get a pretty good head on it when you were directing it towards me. Yeah. So, ready? Whew. This is my mirror for you. <laughs> Whew. It's total your moment. Yeah. That's... Yeah. But I think I mean, for me it like made a lot of sense of cuz what you just did and what you just spoke and how you could start to fill some of those things like you start to go into some of your pain and some of your past and some of your experiences that you could come that that started to come up as you were listening to me. Mm -hmm. And then as you started to fill some of those and connect with some of those things, you had this other thing that stepped in the way of you filling those. And it manifests in the way of like, oh, look at how, uh, you know, because of this moment in my past as a child or because of this pain, the manifestation of it now in our children. So this thing that comes in and stops you from feeling that thing that you're remembering from your childhood um, in the way that that thing has like morphed and adapted over time and now comes in as look at what you've done to your kids, but it hasn't always done that because obviously you haven't had kids. And so it has come in and protected you from feeling those things. It's just morphed and adapted with you to blame like here, I'll protect you from feeling this stuff in the way that we do that now is we know that you can immediately disconnect from it because you start to feel the shame and the pain and everything like that for our kids. But it's a, it's a, a coping mechanism. It's a thing that has been protecting you from a, from a very early age. So we would need to identify it, address it, paint a picture around it or a visual or something like that, that you would then be able to also address and talk to and feel separate from those two things. I don't know if that made any sense. It makes total sense in my head and the way that I'm thinking about it <laughs> and the way that I know you, because I mean, the last thing you want to do, baby, is go back and feel any of that fucking shit from your past. Do you know what I think? Tell me. I think you should go have another conversation with John. You go figure this shit out and keep your nose out of my business. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I will have another conversation. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> it's really hot. I know. And I'm kind hot. of emotional just because it's hot. Yeah. So, whatever. Don't read into it. At the end of the day, Steph, you and I are doing wonderful things. Yes. That, that was the point. And we're doing wonderful jobs at life. We really are. We are. We're killing it. I believe that to a point. Not to a point. Let's to just point. believe it all the way. Well, it's not all the way. Let's just pretend right now. Look at me. Let's just believe it all the way. Believe it all the way. We're doing a wonderful job at life right now. To a point. All the way. All the way to a point. I'm going to take your point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just all the way for a minute. Don't let anything in the way of feeling that feeling of like, we are doing a wonderful job at life right now. I don't know how to do that. Well, that's why we're going to practice. I could see your brain. You just blinked. <laughs> your brain went like, cannot compute. <laughs> System breaking down. <laughs> I can see it really clear. When Round peg going I through a square hole. <laughs> <laughs> I struggle with internal reflection and positivity with that. I definitely get a, I definitely struggle with some tunnel vision when it comes to myself. You can hear it with other people. You can see it with me. I can. But it's like, you know, you run into those roadblocks. It's like when you turn to look at yourself, then you run face first into your own goddamn walls you put up. You're like, <laughs> so it's hard to, I don't know. That uh, stuff that I was reading today on relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that it talked about was 
that like right now in this room, you and me, you know, there's three people here. There's three things here. Mm -hmm. There's you, me, and then there's our relationship. And we have to feed all of those things. We have to be cognitive of all of those things. And our relationship needs things. Mm -hmm. And you and I provide those things to that relationship in one way, shape, or form. And you need things. And I need things. And we all have to be cognitive of those things as well. Like the totality of all of it. And I think you and I have started to do that in our, like subconsciously, I think we've started to do that. I think literally we've started to do that as well as like, I don't know if you have awareness of this or not, but in some way, shape or form, you and I have been talking about our relationship as this thing as well. Like in our verbiage and the way that we've been talking with one another and Mm -hmm. acknowledging like, that's a thing. Like you and me are separate from like, this, you know, like th- there's a thing called Craig and staff that is separate from our family, that is separate from our kids, that is separate from like the everyday, you know, right now our house is 900 degrees and we're hot and <laughs> we got to go down to the store and get some whatever, like, do we really? No, we don't. Okay. <laughs> but there's this thing that is you and me that is so special and unique and perfect and we have to look at it and address it and take care of it and feed it. Yeah. And we've been doing that. That's a good thing. No, it is. I'm just, um, that's the fridge dear. Oh, that's interesting. Don't get squirreled. Look at me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Loud noises. I don't work. remember what I was going to say. <laughs> I totally got squirreled. Um, oh, I was like, I must be distracting <laughs> because I'm, <laughs> worked the fridge was like i got you uh i'm finding sassy things and humorous things to break the uh, intensity of that to break through hmm? break on through to the other side so we we don't have to sit in this space any longer babe we can be done we can wrap up we're almost finished i'm fine but cool we can be done too <laughs> <laughs> i'm not running from it i may not be like, I may be swimming against the current here, but I'm not jumping out. I'm proud of you. Well, thank you. I'm proud of you, too. But I'm really proud of you. Thank you. I don't know what you want me to do right now. This is uncomfortable. <laughs> you think you can sit and receive it? Kiss it. Um, I don't know. Try. I see you. What? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. My... For those of you just tuning in and listening, Stephanie is very uncomfortable right now, <laughs> squirming around in her chair, looking left and right, <laughs> scratching at her throat, wanting to immediately get up and leave this uh, moment in time. This is hot. You said we were done with the podcast. <laughs> I'm confused. Microphone dropped and walking out the door. Thanks, babe. Hey, the fact that I say thank you and I accept it the best I can is huge. Before, I would, instead of hearing my own reasons why I don't feel like that, you know, I would not even believe you believe that. I would be like, I would think, no, you don't. You're not, you, I, I wouldn't believe it. I may not be able to receive it, but I at least now believe that you mean what you say with that. Like, that I believe you are proud of me. And that feels so good. Like, don't stop telling me just because I don't know how to receive it. Like, keep it coming. Thank you. I just, I believe you. It's just really hard to, like, like all. I live. So what happens in my head is I hear all the reasons why I'm not. Um, there's nothing to be proud of, and it doesn't matter how. Because I can look at things, and there are things that I'm like, yeah, that's right, good job, stuff. Yeah, but look at all the stuff. It's so hard to, um, really take notice of where your accomplishments are because you're already done looking at those because you've accomplished it and you're what's next part of it. you're looking at what you need to do now and there's so much and then when you have more awareness you're looking at the ways that you should have done whatever accomplished you didn't make differently so even your accomplishments you didn't do right you should have done this so 
that's an unhealthy thing, but I recently heard something that I will share that I'm going to try that, um, might help with that. Um, it was give yourself not permission. That was another good one. That was a Brene Brown one. Permission slips. I liked that one for a while. I should remember it. Oh, I don't want to mess it up. Uh, reward. It wasn't permission. It was reward. Reward yourself. Celebrate yourself just for trying. Not for your accomplishments, not for when you make the achievements, but just for simply trying. So I guess that goes with getting in the arena too. So all these women coming up with things, but I liked that because I, I won't reward myself for trying. I criticize myself for failing and not achieving whatever I achieve faster or better or like all the things I, like, I don't even, I don't know. Have you been showing up to practice every day? No, no, I have Lately? not. Lately I have not, but you know what? Lately? Um, I've spent some days in bed. That doesn't yeah. mean you ain't showing up to practice. Think about how not disconnected you are from your life right now. Okay. Right? It's okay. So I am very, I am connected to my life right now. However, it's hard to see that as an accomplishment when I have been so sad. You know, sometimes we're going to use sports analogies, even though neither this one of us This ought to be really interesting. <laughs> I'm going to have fun with this. Hold on. Listen up, everyone. <laughs> sometimes you break your leg, but the coach still makes you show up and sit on the sidelines and watch practice. Mm -hmm. So you might not be practicing. You might not be participating, but you're still showing up to practice. Yeah. And that's what you and I have been doing for quite some time, as we're still showing up to practice. Even if sometimes we're sitting over there on the bed, fuck you, I'm not fucking watching this stupid practice. And then like slowly you look up and you're like, oh, I can see what they're doing. I'm watching practice. So we've been doing more that. like uh, trying to pretend like you're not broke and that you're still on the field hobbling around. That's what it feels like. It's like, no, I'm okay. I can help. Holding everybody back, ruining it for everybody, <laughs> making the game. And because you're dumbass is out there with your fucking broken leg thinking you're gonna be able to do anything worthwhile that's more mine <laughs> oh man if i could just sit my ass on the sideline that might be easier i love you well this turned to what i don't know it's so much easier for me to help than to receive help. That's what you did. You fucking flipped the shit because you didn't want to sit there and talk to the little boy. You're like, focus on the wife. Boom, your turn. <laughs> it's not that I didn't want to talk to the little boy. I think we both acknowledged I wasn't going to be doing that on I the know, podcast. I know, but I don't see why, like, I don't know how it turned on me. Well, I didn't make you go talk to the little girl. I just made you acknowledge that she existed. And I, I didn't make you do anything. You, you know did what? that all on your own. Two things. I had two things. I'm going to look because I don't know. Stevie. Okay, she's telling me two things. Teacher parking lot. I gotta find out where that is. Oh, I know where that is. Okay. Okay, squirrel. Two things. I had two two big things happen, um, and whether it holds or not, I don't know. So two two things that were sporadic out of nowhere that says actually I guess three. No, but it's two. So you you did a little a little walk with me and you helped me uh, see path and that heading in the right direction she's oh. talking about something that took place yesterday not on the podcast but go ahead yes <laughs> um, and i'm not going to get too deep into either of this i'm just going to bring some just you know it's not because i don't want to get too deep on the podcast no, but I get it. I get it. it'll take me five goddamn years to get the whole yeah. thing out so to in lieu of that um hope and see that was on the right way was going the right way and some beautiful things happened with that visual visualization that gave me some confirmation. And then with that, um, coming home last night, I had a very um, strong trigger hit that um, has ruled me since I was 16. And, you know, I'm nowhere near 16 <laughs> anymore. Um, that I fell away last night. And just sitting in the awareness that it fell away and it wasn't a positive thinking through it fell away. It wasn't a, you know, when you tough through it, I can do this. Those last few, you know, reps, whatever 
where you're trying to really push your way through and muscle your way through it. It wasn't that it was just a complete, a complete fell away. And, um, I just went with it and that felt so amazing. And then you brought the, um, correlation between the significance of, it was, it was a song, (laughs) you know, how those songs can trigger you, how the correlation of that, um, and the little vision thing that we had were tied in with some tiger's eye was beautiful and then gave me so much like energy and like all this momentum I'm like oh my gosh because I didn't even see it which is funny because a tiger's eye stone was huge part of it and the song is I have the tiger and I couldn't make those two ends meet (laughs) so (laughs) sometimes you get really tunnel vision when it's yourself and um then this morning my was doing part of the movement and was doing yoga in the room and kind of a funny thing my you know when you're a parent and you get pictures of your kids and you blow them up so my mom took me for senior pictures um when I was a senior and had this big picture of me that she hung in the house because you hang pictures of your kids in the house and then she has another big picture of me now so she didn't need this old picture of me anymore and gave it to me and I'm like I don't want this I don't want a big picture of me the hell so my husband is sweet enough that he likes the big picture of me and he hung it up in the room. So I have a big picture of myself in the bedroom and there is nothing that I like about that. I hate it. And I not only don't like looking at it because I don't like looking at myself, it makes me feel, Ugh, but then I get really embarrassed if somebody sees it because it looks like I'm just one of those people that hang a big picture of themselves. Um, anyways, I was doing some yoga and was facing it and, um, silly. I started talking to myself and like that age and it's like, you're going to be okay. Just I'll see, I'll save it. You know, I won't get into, but every time I would come back up into whether it was mountain or volcano and I was looking, I just would keep talking to myself, but it was, it was just that girl that felt like there was nothing left that everything had already been ruined and there was really no future so cool things right path it's hard but yeah i'm still in the fucking game <laughs> there's no sidelines for me but sometimes i cry and <laughs> get really dark but i still keep going good job baby I know. <clears throat> you did a wonderful job of bringing home the episode <laughs> thank you that was super cool. I want to hear more about that <laughs> on next week. <laughs> I love you. I love you. You've got something on your mind that's brewing. What's coming out? <laughs> it's not a memory that is really super connected to some experience, but it's very connected to a feeling because it feels like a passenger that's been with me for a long time. And it's this visualization of like seeing that little boy at the window sobbing and me as a grown ass man, as the adult that I am today, wanting to go to him and comfort him.